Okay, so now we're going to be looking at numeric patterns and geometric patterns. Cool. So, over here we have our numeric pattern. So, they ask us write down the rule which gives the relationship between P and T in each of the following. So, we need to find out what the rule is over here. Remember, the rule is what's going to give us a relationship between P and T. So, if we can look at our P values here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Our T values were 3, 6, 9, and 12. What is the relationship between all of these numbers over here to their corresponding T value? These P values have to have a relationship that is common with their T values. So, how we're going to look at that is, we're going to see here that we have 1 as our first P value and T, our first T value is 3. So, what can we do to 1 to get to our 3 over here? Well, if we look at it very simply, we can say that we're going to times it by 3, right? So, if we times it by 3, we get 3, right? So, if we, so now we're going to check with our other values as well. So, we can check 2 times 3, we get 6, right? And you can see it is the right value over here. It's the T value. Now, if we times 3 by 3, do we get our t value of 9? Yes, we do. And if we times 4 by 3, do we get our t value of 12? Yes, we do. So we know that the common relationship here is timesing our p value by 3. So the way we'll write this rule is t is equal to p times 3. Or you can write it as 3p. That just means that because there's no space in between here, that we're timesing 3 and P together. Cool. So that is the rule for this numeric pattern over here. If we move on over here, we can see it says our values are 1, 2, 3, and 6. These are our P values. And then we have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 2. So, how are we going to find the rule for this? Once again, let's start with the first value. How can we get to negative 3? So, you could say we can times 1 by negative 3. Okay, let's go with that first. So, we times 1 by negative 3, and we get negative 3 as our t value. <coughs> so, what we have to do is we move on to our next term. Now, we're going to go 2 times negative 3. If we times 2 by negative 3, do we get negative 2? No, we don't. So, what else can we do to 1 to get to negative 3? We could try and minus 4. So, if we minus 4 from 1, we get negative 3. Moving on to our next term, we have to check. <coughs> 2 minus 4. Does 2 minus 4 give us our t value of negative 2? Yes, it does. If we're looking at 3 and we minus 4, do we get negative 1? Yes, we do. And then for last check, 6 minus 4, we get 2, which is our t value. Straight away, we can see what the rule is going to be. So we know that the rule is t is equal to p minus 4. Cool. So that will be our rule, which shows the relationship between p and t for this numeric example over here. So now, in these examples, they want us to find the value for P and T in each of the given number sequences. So we're going to try and identify the pattern that is being used, <coughs> or the general rule that's being used over here, to find out the values of P and T. So if you look at the first example, we can see 11 and 22. So what did they do to 11 to get to 22? They could have times by 2, or they could have added 11. So how we're going to look at that is, we're going to see here, okay, we have a 55 on this end over here. So obviously P and T have to fall in between 55 and 22. So we know that if we're going to times 22 by 2, we can get 44, which is already too close to 55, which means we can't fit two values in between. So immediately we have to see that we are adding 11 in this case. So if we add 11, we get 22. So we know that then our P value 
our p value is going to be equal to 33 and our t value if we add 11 to 33 we get 44 cool and then we're going to look at our next example over here we can see that how did they get to 4 from 1 and how did they get to 7 from 4 we can see straight away they're just adding 3 so obviously we're going to add 3 to 7 to get our p-value so our p-value is going to be equal to 10 and our t-value is going to be equal to 13 so that was this example was 7 plus 3 and this one was 10 plus 3 I hope that all makes sense. So now we'll move on to our last example now. In this example, they say, record the number of dots in each array in a table. Determine the diagram pattern. Hence, determine the amount of dots in the 25th array if the pattern is continued. So the first thing I ask us to do is record the number of dots in each array in the table. So we can see we have array one, array two, and array three. So we're going to put in one, two, and three. So this is the first array, second array, third array. The first array has four dots, the second array has eight dots, and the third array has 12 dots. So we've successfully recorded our values into a table, right? So what they ask us to do next, determine the diagram pattern. So we're going to try and find out what is the pattern over here. So let's call our top row n values, okay? And then the bottom is just our number of dots, right? So these are going to be n values. So how do we get from 1 to 4? How do we get from 2 to 8 and 3 to 12? So if we look at that very quickly, we can see that if we times 1 by 4, we get 4. If we times 2 by 4, we get 8. If we times 3 by 4, we get 12. So straight away, we now rule is going to be our array number times 4. So how can we write that? Another way we can write our rules out is by saying tn which is going to be uh, the start of the rule so we can say tn is equal to so we remember we've called our array numbers n so ultimately we're going to say we times in n by 4 because 1 will be fit in the place of n so we have 4n that is our rule so tn is equal to 4 times n so basically what that means if we're going to substitute in, if we want to find out how much is in array 2, we're going to say term 2 is equal to 4 times 2. So you can see array number 2 is term 2 as well. So we're trying to find out what array number 2 is. So we'll say term 2 is equal to 4 times 2, which gives us 8. As you can see, this confirms the rule is correct as we get our 8 over there. So the next part says, hence determine the amount of dots in the 25th array if the pattern is continued. So we know that our array is our n value, right? So 25 is going to be our new n value. So we're trying to find out what term 25 is. So we'll say term 25 is going to be equal to 4. Now remember we said n was 25, that's why that tn has turned to t25. So we can substitute in 25 now. So we have t25 is equal to 4 times 25. Therefore our t25 is equal to 100. So that's how much dots will be in the 25th array. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, this is the end of our video lesson. Thank you very much.